we're approaching the end of 2020 and the end of a chaotic year where we have seen just chaos upon chaos. We see that now the vaccine has been approved for COVID. We've seen tragic deaths all around the world. We've seen just insane type of totalitarian dictatorship type of style governments rise. And we're kind of seeing what their true intentions has been all along. We're in such a fast paced society in a fast food society that sometimes we don't take a few seconds just to talk to God and allow God to minister to our lives. And I went through a big learning lesson this past week where the enemy tried to attack me on my past and some past wounds that I had. You see in Isaiah 61 1 as we get started you have to understand that the devil is out there as a roaring lion consistently chasing after an attack on your life. From the moment you get up to the moment that you go to bed, every time you try to go to bed and you have those restless nights, there's a lot of attacks happening where you can't even sleep in peace. The devil is hitting us from every single angle. Remember in Isaiah 61 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Your calling is a big one on this earth, but understand that those promises also apply to you. And sometimes I'm a very good person at telling you that God wants to heal you, that God wants to deliver you, all is going to work out for you, everything's going to be okay, but I never worry really about me in the sense that I'm just like that. Even if we go to the stores and, you know, we're going to buy something, I never buy anything for me. I'm not like that. I don't know. I'm weird. So this week we were in a position that we were stranded. Our vehicle was giving some hiccups here and there and, um, it's one of those things that we knew could happen, obviously, but we definitely did not expect it to be 30 something degrees in Florida and for the vehicle just to stop running completely and us to be in the middle of kind of nowhere because I live in the boonies and um, we had to station ourselves in a parking lot where pretty much there was only one other car there and um, it was 10 o'clock at night. So as we're there, it's getting pretty cold. I mean, 30 something in Florida for us is really, really cold. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what am I honestly going to do? Because these are things you don't plan for necessarily. I checked with my insurance on Geico. I didn't have roadside service, so I was kind of stuck. I checked with the department store there to see if anyone there had any ability to help me out, you know, see what they could do. That was a decline. Earlier in that day, I had witnessed to a young man and pray for this young man. His name is Randall. And how we ended up talking, only God only knows. I always try to talk to strangers and just preach to them the gospel in, the, in a crazy way, you know? Like, I'll be like, have you heard about this, man? That's kind of crazy. And they'll be like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And I said, well, you know, you know what happened? What's even crazier in the book of Revelation, it predicted a day where no one could buy or sell except they had a mark. What do you think about that? So we start talking. Long story short, I get his number on my phone and um, he did, he did, he speaks like a sailor. So he cussed the storm because that's how he talks, but he was interested and I was preaching to him the gospel. So I get out of the car just thinking to myself because one, I live in the boonies and I know the Holy Spirit's going to protect me, but at the same time, I'm not about to let someone just pull up on me on my car and my family inside. So I believe in the Holy Spirit and God's protection over me, but I also believe that in the trunk, I have a jack that I can use, you know, <laughs> and have to do whatever's needed to sway anybody away. So as I'm outside the car, I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? And that particular moment just brought up so many memories. And it just goes to show you how the devil can use a little thing to just attack. So immediately the thought comes in my head, text Randall. So I hit up Randall. I'm like, Randall, man, I know you just met me, man. But I have no family near me. My roadside assistance, I don't have it. Um, 
I'm not trying to pay too much money for a tow truck, man, because I don't have it like that. I need your help, bro. And he's like, man, don't even say the word twice, bro. I'm only like 30, 40 minutes away. Let me get there. I got you. And I'm like, bro, I appreciate it. And sure enough, you know, 30 minutes later, he arrives. And we troubleshoot it. We see what's going on. It's not just the battery. It's other issues going on internally. Bottom line, we get home. And as I got home, I was grateful to God for that opportunity of getting home. I knew that the next day I had to go and, and try to get the car resolved. And I did. I had to go and get that stuff the next day and spend all day there. And, and just a difficult day that next day. Getting stuff settled so that we can have a reliable vehicle. But that night as I was laying in bed, the devil just started bringing up my past. And started bringing up so many wounds that I had that God had already healed me of. You know, there's a lot of wounds that you have in your past. You know, there's a lot of wounds that you have in your past that sometimes you forget of. And you think that God has healed you of them and others that you just don't want to remember. And I know it sounds super corny, but as I was sitting there extremely grateful for a total stranger helping me, I thought thoughts started coming in my head of the many times that I was rejected by my own family. The times that I was stuck on I-4 and I didn't even have a cell phone because I'm the type of person that I try to live within my means. And back then we couldn't afford a cell phone. So all I had was one of those track phones that were you paid by the minute. And I didn't even have minutes on it. I just knew that through there I could call the Road Ranger on I-4 because you can call 911. 911 transfers you to the Road Ranger and the Road Ranger can come help you. That's the only thing I knew. And my car had broke down on I-4. This was many years ago. And when I tell you that we were beyond broke, I mean, you have no idea. And I had a caravan. I had a 1990-something caravan. And it was just dead, man. That, that car was just toast. So I was able to, with my track phone, called 911. 911 transferred me to the Road Rangers. Road Rangers showed up. He let me borrow his phone. I called my brother. And I called my uncle. And I called family. And they all said no. They all said no. They were well off because I know they're well off. And they would say, you need to give me gas money up front. And I was like, bro, I don't have the gas money up front, man. You know, Natalie's at home. The wife is at home. Bro, it's getting late, man. Help me out. Nah, man, I'm good, man. Unless you have it up front, I'm good. I was like, wow, you know. And then I called other family members, but because they were heavily influenced by my brother because he had them all manipulated. They all thought that I hated him because he's gay and all of that stuff. So they all turned their back on me. And God sent a stranger back then to stop and at least take me home. So those thoughts started coming in. And I know that sounds so corny. You'd be like, I wounded you. That's nothing. No, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You have to understand that when God delivers us from this, the kingdoms of this world, you have your wounds, I have my wounds, you know? And um, so I got up, I said, no, the devil's a liar. I've already settled this with my brother. My brother repented and he turned away from that lifestyle before he passed away. May the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus, right? And I just started worshiping Jesus Christ, just trying to forget all these things because these thoughts just came in just out of nowhere. So then other thoughts started coming in. Do you remember the time? And I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm open with you because you guys think that I don't go through stuff, but I'd rather be transparent with you because there could be some of you that are going through these attacks. So then I started remembering the other things because you have to understand a lot of my family rejected me for a long time. You guys have been my family. People at my workplace like my sister Cindy has been more of my sister than most of my family. You know, Uta and Manfred, my family that I love very much, have been like father figures more than anyone else. Brother Joe and Preetha and have been like brothers and sisters to us. You know, you guys have been more of my family than some of my real family. You have to understand this. So through this all, that's the victory part, that through this all, even though most of my family abandoned me, God didn't abandon me. You see what I'm saying? God did not abandon me. So there was this time where we were doing ministry work. I was working as hard as I could. Like I said, we always, own, if, if we can't afford it, we don't do it, period. That's just how we are. 
so we were living in a, a really ghetto apartment it was at curry ford um in orlando and uh we were there and my dad reaches out and says hey my best friend he's moving back to Colombia. the mobile home next to me he's gonna give it to me for free so i want to give it to you and it was an old mobile home <laughs> but i was like let's do it that'd be awesome because then all i gotta do is pay the lot rent so i go see it from the outside and it looks raggedy right but me and the wife were like oh we're gonna paint it we're gonna make it nice it's gonna be something for for natalie she can you know do her thing and I was like, man, this is such a blessing, man. You know, it's, it was going to save me a couple hundred dollars a month in rent. I was like, man, you know what? This is such a blessing. So my brother got in my, my father's ear, you know, and family started getting in their ear. The day comes that I'm supposed to go, you know, you know, get the title signed off on me because mobile homes are like titles. They're like cars, pretty much. It's not like a house. And I go and my dad tells me no. He says, no, I talked to your brother. We're going to give it to one of his friends. And I was like, are you kidding me, bro? He's like, yeah, we're going to give it to one of his friends because I, I just ultimately, and he's right, I don't feel that you should be living there. It's too much to fix up, and I would rather just give it to him. From those stages on, not only did it hurt me physically, it hurt me emotionally, it hurt me, it hurt me on every angle that I alienated a lot of my family just as equally as they alienated me. And it took God working with me through many years to help me overcome all of these things. And all of a sudden this past week, I have this issue and a good gesture that someone does just reminds me that man, sometimes strangers are better than family. And as I'm sitting there being grateful of it, here comes a demonic attack from the devil. And I'll tell you what, I had to pray. I had to pray because those wounds are, God has healed me, I've forgiven, but they're still there. You have to remember that, that we're human and we go through these things. But just understand this, that if it happened to me, it's gonna happen to you. Family rejection, it's something that happens. I I'll be honest with you, I deserved some of the rejection because of how I was when I was in my teen years, but that was in my teen years. You know, me experiencing a situation that my daughter did not know what a grandfather is or a grandmother is, that was not something that I think that was right. Me going through situations that I had to get payday loans to pay the bills, that I had to go to pawn shops to do stuff when my family was right there to help me. And them knowing that I had stopped doing the things that I used to do. I wasn't dealing, I wasn't doing anything. Those things there, they shaped my life forever, man. They really did. And it took God really working in me, man. Changing me so that I can be a new person. And it goes back to Isaiah 61.1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. Hath, he has sent me to the bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Sometimes we read that and we're like, yeah, God has anointed us to preach, but you forget that there is a God out there that also wants to do the same thing for you. And this week in particular, I felt God's love and God's soothing calmness over me as the devil was coming at me. And instead of me being out there preaching the gospel, it was God preaching to me. And instead of me trying to tell people that God can heal the brokenhearted, it was God telling me, yeah, I know it hurt. And I know you buried a lot of those emotions deep within because you didn't want to deal with them. But you know what? Did I not send someone to help you? And no, I'm not talking about that I heard his voice audibly. No, but in my spirit, did I not send someone to protect you? Hear God today for you as well. Did God has, has God left you abandoned when everyone left you abandoned? Don't become a prisoner of these past wounds, man. They will eat you up. They will eat you up. The devil's going to remind you of all of these things that people have done unto you take him to God, submit them to God, and let him continue to set you free. For God has not forgotten all of your tears, all of your worries, all of your fears. If you have a family member that you have something against, go talk to them. I've had real conversations with my father where I've asked him, I've been like, bro, why'd you do that, man? That was wrong. 
and he'll be like, I didn't know any better. I was, you know, my your brother was telling me this. Your, everybody was saying that. The only person in my family who didn't do any of this was my sister, Wanda. You know? And I've been like, Dad, man, you know? And I joke around with him all the time. We laugh about it now. I'm like, bro, you, you know, the stuff that I saw growing up. Let me tell you guys, I tell my dad all the time, you lucky I didn't come become like Michael Myers or something, you know, like the Puerto Rican Freddy Cougar. Because I've seen it all from my my brother killed my pet. Like literally murdered my my aunt and my pet in front of me. I've seen all of that. I, I mean, I, I remember me being 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, squaring off with an adult. Did it teach me a lot? Absolutely, because from there on, you know, I mean, in a street fight or anything like that, I already knew that it, I, I may not be able, I'm not Floyd Mayweather, but I'll grab a rock, you know? <laughs> so, so me and my dad have had honest conversations on it, you know? And it's changed me for the better. What the devil meant for wrong, God has turned it for good. And me and my dad have a great relationship now. But every now and then, the devil will come out you, out to you, reminding you of your past. Or maybe you're that person that, like me, many years ago, you were going through the actual attacks where your family turned against you. And it hurts, man. It really does hurt. Just know that there's no better boss than Jesus when you're preaching the gospel. <laughs> Just, I'm telling you, man, there's been times, man, that you, let me tell you, man, you know, it's insane. It's insane. You know, for many years, I craved for my father just to say, like, I'm proud of you, bro. Just to be like, man, I'm proud of you. But then, as my relationship with Jesus Christ became so deep, that when my father actually and me resolved our issues and he actually said he was proud of me, it didn't mean anything. Because at that point in time, a substitute father had taken over and I was God himself. And I knew that God was there with me and, and, and my whole family being stripped away, I learned one thing, that family will go, but God won't ever go. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Jesus is there. So let's pray. And I know that this video has been a little bit different, but I think it's important for us to talk about these things because I can't be the only one who's gone through it. And as we're going to pray, right? Remember that verse again, which we've just stuck in with Isaiah 61.1, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives. You know, if you're captive to what someone did to you when you were a child, and there are things that I hold dear and dear with me that I won't share with you about the things that I experienced. I only shared with you some of the lighthearted stuff because some of the other stuff, I, I don't even want to go there. But like me, you have things that you've seen, abuses that you've experienced that no one knows. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. One of the biggest gateways that we have for spiritual attack is unforgiveness. You've seen how 2020 has played out. Everything has been absolutely insane. The last thing that you need now, as you head into a new year, right, as they say, is to allow any of your past to continue to detain you from your future that is in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus Christ, for everything that you do for us. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for being our father, for being our mother, for being our cousin, for being that grandfather that we need, for being wh whomever we need in our family that has abandoned us. You have more than substituted each and every single one of them. Yet at the same time, Heavenly Father, remind every person here that at some point in time, you may call them to go preach to that person that hurt them. You've done it to me. And I've had to go and say, you know what? Ephesians six twelve. we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We cannot take these attacks personal. Sure, they've wounded us, but guess what? This is just the flesh. We have to be bigger than that. And we have to say, you know what? God, heal me and go preach. Because what God called you for is big. And the devil wouldn't be attacking you this much if he didn't know that you had a huge calling. So in the name of Jesus Christ, right there where you're at, 
ask God to bind up those wounds. Or if you're going through a situation like I went through for a period of a couple of hours, it's gone now, but it was a spiritual attack. As the devil's reminding you of your past, keep the focus on God. Don't argue with the devil. The devil is a liar. Don't argue with the devil. You open up the scriptures and you start reading verses on healing. You start reading verses on forgiveness. So as thoughts come in your head that say, can you believe that they did that to you? You'll be like, God is so awesome that he has forgiven me, right? So you start reading scriptures on forgiveness. You don't even entertain the devil. You cast down all imaginations to the authority of Jesus Christ. You go to the word of God. And you'll see that the devil has to flee. But if you start entertaining these thoughts, you'll end up with a whole argument about, you know, the whole thing. And you'll start thinking, that, nah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. In the name of Jesus, it's not worth it. We thank you, Jesus, for your healing. We thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Anything that the devil has tried to take from us in the physical, our Heavenly Father has been there to provide that and much more. That and much more. In the name of Jesus, amen. May God bless you guys. Thanks for listening to me today as I open my heart to you guys in hopes that this can help anyone out there. Uh, remember that Jesus loves you and that Jesus has never failed anyone on earth. He's not about to start failing you in 2020. So keep your head up. Keep your head up. It's going to work out. Consider sharing these videos. Consider taking 5 or 10 seconds to share with a friend. Remember to bookmark the website and thanks for all support. Thanks for ministry support. God bless you guys. Have a blessed week and uh, you be strong.